Hi, my name is Dr. Jeff Terrell from the University of Michigan Department of Otolaryngology, otherwise known as Ear, Nose, and Throat Department. I'm going to just talk to you today just a little bit about endoscopic sinus surgery. I'd like to have this video available for my patients to view uh, about endoscopic sinus surgery. This is a general talk. It's not specifically about you know, your type of surgery that you might have, um, but it's a nice general talk on endoscopic sinus surgery. It's not a talk about who needs sinus surgery because that's a more detailed talk and there are a lot of different considerations that are taken into account. But once you're decided to have surgery with your surgeon, what does that, what, what, what happens? So typically when I see patients, I'll talk to them about, you know, the medical and surgical options. And when we decide that surgery is the option, then I talk about what typically occurs. So once the decision is made, you know, most surgeons will have some conversation with their patients about what's involved with the surgery. So let's talk about that first, what's involved with the surgery. So before the surgery is done, you will typically come in and have a history and physical exam done. That may be in your doctor's office or in a preoperative history and physical clinic. Oftentimes at that appointment, and usually at that appointment, uh, the sinus uh, surgery consent is done. And the consent is a process of talking about the surgery. So I'd like to talk just very briefly about sinus surgery and what I tell patients about sinus surgery in general. Again, this is not specific to any one patient. But uh, first of all, the sinus surgery, when you come in, it's, it's oftentimes outpatient surgery. Sometimes people are admitted, but 95% or more are outpatient surgery. That means you come in on the day of the surgery, uh, you meet everybody again, uh, you'll talk to your surgeon, the anesthesiologist typically, and then you'll go into the operating room. So they'll take you from the preoperative holding area into the operating room. You'll have an IV in your hand at that time, and uh, most sinus surgery is done under general anesthesia. So you'll come in, they'll, they'll put you under anesthesia through the IV in your hand, they'll put a tube in to breathe for you so you're totally out under uh, and a general anesthesia so you're not aware of anything. Then with the surgery, uh, what we'll do is uh, we typically open the sinuses. So think about it, there's uh, four pairs of sinuses. You have sinuses below the eyes, between the eyes, and above the eyes, and another pair behind the eyes. So they're called maxillary, ethmoid, frontal, and sphenoid sinuses. And depending on the patient's condition, we open one or sometimes all eight of the sinuses. The sinus surgery is done, again, under general anesthesia. Um, it can take 30 minutes to a couple hours, maybe on average, might be an hour and a half. Again, depends on the patient. We use very small cutting and grasping instruments to open up the sinuses so they drain better. We have small cutting instruments. We have small grasping instruments. We have a little machine that suctions and cuts. It's called a microdebreeder, particularly for patients with polyps. Um, you don't need to know any of this, but these are just some of the tools that we use. Um, and uh, the surgery is uh, done, again, hour, hour and a half, something like that. Um, some surgeons put packing in the nose. I particularly don't put packing in the nose for the vast majority of my patients because patients hate having their nose completely plugged up. But there's some variability in practice there. And then patients wake up. Um, there's a period of time in the recovery room where you're kind of sleepy. But um, the anesthesia we give for sinus surgery at Michigan, patients usually wake up fairly quickly and, and have very few side effects from the anesthesia. Um, you're in the phase one of recovery room for um, 30 to 60 minutes with a nurse you know, by your side, and then uh, you would go to phase two of recovery uh, where your family members can come in and hang out with you for a few minutes before you go home. Before you go home, you typically patients will get a prescription for some antibiotics and pain medicines and maybe some other medications to go home with, and then they'll go home with somebody driving them home. So that's the process from the uh, pre-op to, to, to going home. I usually do have a, uh, a discussion with patients about the consent for sinus surgery, or that's done at the pre-op clinic, um, usually or often at a different location. So what I tell people about sinus surgery is when you do surgery anywhere in the body, everything near there is at some risk. So if you do knee surgery, anything around the knee is at risk. When you do sinus surgery, things that are around the sinuses are at risk. So the eye is near there and the brain is near there, uh, near the sinuses. Uh, it's extremely unusual to get uh, eye or brain complications, but I tell people there's about a one in a thousand chance of uh, trauma to the eye, a break of a bone or bleeding or some sort of trauma to the eye. Bleeding is, it can occasionally occur. So there's about a one in a thousand chance of double vision, weakness vision, blurred vision, or loss of vision with sinus surgery. 
Likewise, the brain is, is above the sinuses, and so uh, there's about a one in a thousand chance of a crack of a thin bone. Spinal fluid could leak out, uh, infection could go up, uh, bleeding, or even trauma to the brain. These are all very unusual complications, um, but uh, you could get, a person could get meningitis or brain infection or trauma to the brain. Um, again, extremely rare. Um, it's unusual to get nosebleeds after surgery. Uh, you know, you can have problems with healing or scar tissue forming after surgery, but the, the, concerns, the concerns that people have the most are about the eye and the brain, and those are, are very rare complications. Of course, every surgery is a little bit different. I'm giving general, uh, general numbers. Some surgeries are much easier and lower risk. Some surgeries are more difficult and, and are higher risk, and, and you'd have that discussion with your surgeon. So that's it about endoscopic sinus surgery. I hope that's helpful. I'll try to get this out on YouTube so people can, can look at it. Uh, again, Jeff Terrell is my name. I'm a surgeon at the University of Michigan uh, Medical Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Thank you.